For your information, and as a disclaimer, any medical information contained in this podcast should always be vetted by your doctor or health professional. Professor Morpheus is not a registered health practitioner. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Not on the Evening News video podcast. We encourage you to subscribe to our channel after you say to yourself, Damn this is good stuff I didn't even know was going on out here and you are enjoying the information we are presenting as a public service, to keep everyone informed about things they never put on the evening news anywhere in America. Hello, and welcome back to my Not on the Evening News video podcast. I am Professor Orpheus, and I have a lot of interesting news that never made it on the national evening news as far as I can tell. I'm going to start with the huge news out of California that is making some people angry as crap. California Governor Gavin Newsom is finally doing something that a lot of people say should have happened decades if not hundreds of years ago. He wants to give reparations to the descendants of the poor hapless people who were forced out of their country in chains and forced to work all day long without any pay and little food for hundreds of years. The state of California had housing discrimination that was sanctioned by the state, so to remedy that situation his reparations committee wants to give every descendant of an enslaved person in California that identifies as a black or African American, $223,200. I hope this comes to fruition as maybe then the federal government will also get reparations going like in the House Resolution Bill that finally is ready for a floor vote, titled H.R. 40, which has has been introduced at every congressional session since 1989. But this is the first time it has finally reached a committee vote in 2021, a key step toward passing legislation. If the device of Congress passes H.R. 40, then what Newsom is proposing shouldn't be such a dramatic step. I say the federal government should help California and any other state that wants to contribute to help the descendants of the worst most brutal lifelong slavery system known to man or woman. I am with this all the way. It's about time in this so-called Christian nation. Now. Hold on to that reparations thought process, because I just found out the city of St. Louis in Missouri is putting together their own reparations process for their African American residents. Is all of this reparations talk happening because of that horrifying but very enlightening new Will Smith, movie, Emancipation? According to critics who have seen The Rushes, they say it's the most gritty movie about slavery and black and white anyone has ever seen that will shock all of America and the world. And it makes slavery as realistic as it could possibly get. It must be just that because Will Smith in the movie just got snubbed at the Golden Globes nominations. They are trying to say it's because he slapped Chris Rock and they needed to teach him a lesson. I say that's bullshit, they just don't want to advertise the movie that puts whites back then in a new Christian nation in a horrible, demonic evil light. And they know it. What rich white person wants to try eating their expensive food after seeing a few scenes from that movie? Well, that's it for me ever watching the Golden Globes ever again in my lifetime. Just so you know the time frame for this movie is within the time frame they gave the slaves the slave bible, a special bible for slaves who could read that told the slaves to always obey their masters and never run away, if they wanted to go to heaven. What's that you say you are black and you never knew the slave bible existed? You never heard of the slave bible? Google it before they take it off the internet. Go to christianity.com and search for the slave bible if you want more information. What I find disheartening is the fact there is no apology anywhere on the internet that apologizes for fooling those doomed unlucky souls. In fact when another slave in the movie who just had his face branded with a hot poker is arguing with the Will Smith character about the love of God for slaves, the other actor is taking everything he is saying to Smith's character from the slave bible and Smith is responding to him with quotes from that same evil book, not the actual King James Holy Bible. I appreciate the black director throwing that in. Even though most people black or white will have no idea where they both are getting their information. Regardless of race, I encourage everybody on the planet to go see Emancipation regardless of how you feel about Smith and the slap. I didn't like what he did either, but from what I've read, I can't pass this movie up as I don't think they will ever show it on television, not even cable. If inflation isn't handled properly, we have to watch every single penny that comes into our bank accounts, even after we are fortunate enough to get that reparations money. And we have to buy things that will last for the long haul. That even includes cars. Have you ever wondered what are the top 10 cars that have a reputation for lasting the longest? Well, guess what, out of the top 10 cars that last the longest, 6 of them are Toyotas. You have to hand it to the Japanese for building cars right. Are you ready for the list? The Toyotas are in the top 6, along with the number average miles they last, are the Sequoia, number 1 296,509 miles, Land Cruiser, number 2 with 280, 246 miles, Tundra number 4 with 256,022 miles, 
Prius number 6 with 250,601, Avalon number 9 with 245,710, and the Highlander Hybrid, number 10 with 244,994 miles. I know you are dying to know the top American car, if an American car is even in the list. Well Bunky the top American vehicle that lasts the longest on this list is the GMC Yukon XL SUV with 252,360 miles, technically not a car but it is relatively high at number 5 on the list. The highest American vehicle at number 3 is the Chevrolet Suburban with 265,732, the Honda Ridgeline is number 8 with 248,669. Write this list down and keep it handy when you want to buy a car that lasts the longest in your price range. The 74million.org website, yep. I never heard of it either. But it recently announced that the University of Arizona is offering free tuition to all indigenous people who want a college education. That's exactly what I've been promoting for all black people in America who were descended from slaves for decades. What would it hurt honestly? And it would keep those people quiet who say they don't want their tax dollars directly helping black people who cannot afford a higher education in this Christian nation after their ancestors suffered through hundreds of years in the worst lifelong abusive slavery system on the planet. Are you listening University of Arizona, Harvard, Yale, and the rest of you guys? CNN has a story about a mysterious bright light that is beaming out of a supermassive black hole from 8.5 billion light years away, and the light is pointing directly at the Earth. And the light is from a star that fell into the black hole and was ripped to shreds. But I thought we were taught nothing can escape a black hole not even light. There is one website I've never heard of, in, d, tv.com say, this is very mysterious to say the least how is that light escaping the awesome gravitational pull of a supermassive black hole? No one seems to know at the moment, but scientists are trying to figure it out. This is scary news for all men on the planet. Newsweek Online has a big story with a headline that blared, the Y chromosome is going to disappear, scientists say. Without that Y chromosome, there will be no males born on this planet. Right now there are more men than women on the earth. For every 100 female births there are 107 male births. Is this nature's way of evening things up or is it that mysterious light aimed directly at the earth out of that massive black hole that I mentioned earlier? No one honestly knows but scientists all over the world are investigating this strange phenomenon. I've been telling my friends on Facebook about my experiences with lucid dreaming and remote viewing for quite a while now, and I know most of them still don't believe neither one of those things are possible. I told them how in a lucid dream I've gone to the moon via flying through space like Superman and it felt real and sex in a lucid dream feels absolutely real no matter who you are having sex with. I told them if they wanted more information they can read the book that inspired me, Exploring the World of Lucid Dreaming by Stephen LaBerge, or Journeys Out of the Body by Robert Monroe. And I told them how when I was employed by Trans World Airlines I was once in Paris, France and saw my buddy Steve back in San Juan Capistrano, California, who was staying in my house for a few months, while I was out of town as a flight attendant and his girlfriend had kicked him out of their place, lowering the temperature on my waterbed, because he thought that would lower our electric bill and he was tight with money. He was shocked as hell when I called him from the Los Angeles airport right after we landed and told him to up the temperature back before I drove home to an ice cold bed and kick his ass. But most people on Facebook didn't believe that was possible and never tried to have a lucid dream or tried to remote view. But the Central Intelligence Agency has recently declassified a report from 2013 that spells out something called the Gateway Experience invented by a man named Robert Monroe that teaches you how to leave your body like the CIA spies did during the Cold War to spy on Russia. I think a lot of my friends on Facebook are die-hard Christians and thought leaving your body would invite demons to take over your body or something to that effect. I never had any weird experiences while lucid dreaming or remote viewing I always just said a prayer before any session and I learned in a lucid dream, never end a prayer with Amen because that means you are praying to Amun-Ra, an Egyptian god. And never call the real creator of the universe the name God, because that's the real name of Satan as clearly stated in the band from the Holy Bible by church authorities the Book of Enoch, God is Satan's true name. By the way there is a video on YouTube that explains just how Satan has fooled the entire world to worship him, it's titled, Satan's name is God by Alan Horvath, it explains how as the real creator told Moses at the burning bush the true translation of I am, that I am, in Hebrew is, Adonai his name now and forever. Let me say that one more time, the entity in the burning bush said his name now and forever is, Adonai that's what I call the creator. It's hard to stop and not say God when referring to the creator of the universe as God, but that is the true name of Satan, check out that YouTube movie so you can learn to stop saying God of mercy or God help me. Well, it had to happen sooner or later.
Angel has gone to heaven? Actor Stuart Margolin has died. The actor famous for his role as the annoying semi-sidekick of James Rockford, played by James Garner on The Rockford Files, one of my favorite television shows back in the day. He died of natural causes, that I am willing to bet he never saw coming and would have never bet on, that happening. He won an Emmy in 1979 as Best Supporting Actor in a Television Drama and it was well deserved. In other Hollywood news I dug up today, actor Jim Parsons may be willing to come back as Sheldon Cooper in one of my favorite shows of all time, The Big Bang Theory. I just hope a lot of other people miss the show like I do and haven't moved on, on the NBC website, but strangely not on its evening news national show, why I don't know, is the story about a black man who rented an Airbnb with no problems and no heads up from Airbnb and was walking innocently to the store to get groceries shortly after he had moved in and was shot to death by a Caucasian stranger. Now I know the first thing that's coming to your mind is this probably happened in Texas Mississippi Georgia Louisiana, Florida or some other southern state, but the truth is it happened in San Jose California just three months ago, and was never reported on the national news anywhere. To me that is a crime. Because it doesn't tell black folks, you should be careful when you rent an Airbnb and not know the neighborhood that you're renting into. This is America after all. So here's my advice to any black person renting any Airbnb always find out what is the neighborhood's background the Airbnb is in and find out if it is safe for a black person male or female to walk around by themselves night or day even if you have to call the local police to find out. So why didn't this make the evening news in my opinion? Airbnb advertises heavily on the major television networks so the networks didn't want to piss them off. Always follow the money trail in situations like this. Some of these people worship at the altar of money we all know that as a fact. And you know what the Bible says about money and what it really is. Just so you know I found out Airbnb spends over 100 million dollars every year and I mean every year, on television advertising. Now you know this is big news if Forbes magazine felt it had to report, it ahead of the national news channels. Recently Forbes Online had a huge headline that said, one of the biggest stars in the Milky Way is acting a little unstable. This star, named, RWCFI is 1000 times bigger than our own sun and anything that affects it is troubling to every scientist on this planet, except if it is why Herschel Walker lost his race, this story and all photos and other materials have mysteriously disappeared and then just as mysteriously reappeared on the internet. Except for the Futurist.com website as of December 13th still had information on it. It ran a huge headline that read, Terrifying unidentified object 3,000 miles wide has just been detected by our International Space Station. You heard me correctly I said, it is unidentified and it's 3,000 miles wide. I don't know about you, but to me that kinda news should be on the national and local news. Correct me in the comments section if you have seen it on the national news. If you have seen it on television, then what the hell are you calmly looking at this podcast for? You should be writing your preferred congressperson and tell them to tell people about this thing. What the hell is it, is it heading towards Earth, were the astronauts all sober when they spotted it? Was this thing built by the Nephilim giants in the Bible or is it the second coming? Is it here to hopefully take away all Republicans and a Supreme Court justices who sided with white nationalists and anti-Semitics? Then I say bring it on no matter what it is. The wellness52.com website recently had a story about a fruit that can ward off dementia and extend your life by 5 years, so what is this magic fruit that goes back to Jesus Christ's first miracle? Grapes of course. This is why I don't mind a glass of red wine every now and then, by now most people have heard about the amazing fusion breakthrough that promises unlimited energy for homes and businesses, but what they are not telling us or emphasizing is the fact, that even though the technology could be installed right now, today, they keep saying that they won't be able to put it into effect for another decade or more, some scientists are saying that is bullcrap. Those same scientists are saying the main reason why they say it will take a decade or more is because they don't want to lose the money that they're making right now because that fusion energy will be limitless and dirt cheap. As I always say there are some people who worship at the altar of money and we all know what money really is per the Bible and that doesn't seem to bother them at all, when there is something very dangerous about a car that comes to having it recalled, like a fire risk, I believe that should be on the evening news immediately after it has been verified. Subaru just recalled 270,000 SUVs, but raise your hand if you're not one of those owners and you know about the recall. I am willing to bet, not one hand went up. So that means if you were given a fantastic deal to buy his recalled SUV, from your neighbor, it probably wouldn't cross your mind to check the recall status for the vehicle. Because if there was a problem with it and your neighbor tells you it runs fine and has never given him any problems, which is kinda true and he's only selling it to get an electric car, so that inches you to grab it before someone else snatches it from you. 
Then there you are driving around town smiling like Popeye after eating a can of spinach when suddenly the car explodes. And the earth is suddenly below you from high up. Here's something they will never tell you about. On the evening news, anywhere in America. Recently the website sciencealert.com had a huge headline that said, plastic rain is now a thing, and we've underestimated just how heavy it is. The article starts out by saying, a plastic mist descends from the sky each day. You can't see it. Or feel it. It has no smell or taste. But researchers think we are seriously underestimating the invisible downpour. New estimates by a team of scientists from the University of Auckland in New Zealand suggest an average of nearly 5,000 microplastic particles settles on every square meter of Auckland's urban rooftops on any given day. And as if that's not bad enough, the article also states that that dusting adds up to around 74 metric tons of plastic each year, equivalent to about 3 million plastic bottles. Do you need some more bad news about this thing? Well zippy here you go. They go on to say, today, there is no standard methodology or protocol for identifying microplastics, which means that every study is conducted in a slightly different way. As our ability to measure the tiniest of microplastics continues to improve, experts are noticing far more offenders hiding in the air around us than ever before. What I find strange is the fact that there is an 11-year-old girl here in America, who discovered a way to make edible plastics, yeah I know that sounds worse than rain, but that type of plastic will decompose naturally and easily and make it less dangerous according to scientists. So why aren't they talking to her about her patent? Seems to me there is too much money in plastics to want to get rid of it permanently. As I always say, there are people who worship at the altar of money, despite what the Bible says about the love of money. Here is some great news from the, iflscience.com website, again a website I have never known to exist. It carried an article that had a headline that said, Experimental Gene Therapy Cures Teens Quote Incurable Unquote Cancer. You heard that correctly the article starts out by saying, Thanks to a new experimental gene therapy, one teen's previously incurable leukemia is now entirely undetectable, marking an incredible breakthrough in genetic immunotherapies. The teen from the United Kingdom was initially told, the only thing her doctors could do for her was to make her as comfortable as possible before she dies. If you or someone you know suffers from this ailment, it might be very wise of you or them to ask your doctor to look into this innovative new therapy. How would you like to see a real-time image of your beating heart or your lungs in action? Recently an article in one of my favorite websites, thebrightersideofthenews.com had a headline that said, Groundbreaking wearable stickers can generate live images of a patient's organs. That generation is in real time and per the reviews is absolutely incredible to see for both patient and doctor. How is this amazing technique done? Ultrasound imaging is a safe and non-invasive window into the body's workings, providing clinicians with live images of a patient's internal organs. To capture these images, trained technicians manipulate ultrasound wands and probes to direct sound waves into the body. These waves reflect back out to produce high-resolution images of a patient's heart, lungs, and other deep organs. You again might want to ask your doctor if she or he can refer you to someplace that is using this modern technology that is safer than x-rays in most experts' opinion. And speaking of my favorite website for new medical information, the brighter side of the news.com, also had an interesting headline that said, Scientists discover vital new contributor to Alzheimer's disease. The article states the fact those people who don't have enough fiber in their diets per the recommended amount per the experts, seem to suffer from Alzheimer's more than people who maintain an excellent level of fiber. So more raw fruits like grapes and apples and vegetables will go a long way to keeping your brain sharp. Now, let's move on to mental health. On Inc.com there is an excellent article about 12 questions you can ask yourself if you want to reinvent yourself in 2023. Questions like, if the obstacle of money was removed, how would my life look different? Or what productive activities do I spend time doing for no other reason than they make me happy? For me that's sharing knowledge, because my earthly father taught me about Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 and I am a voracious reader. Go to Inc.com to see the full list, now you would have to be deaf blind and dumb to be unable to figure out why this never made it to the evening news, because this is black and white people stepping up to help black people with money from an organization a lot of white people frown on. What is that organization you ask? Why it's the Black Lives Matter organization? And what are the kind-hearted white people doing to help an altruistic effort by this black group? Why it's black student debt relief, now that the Republicans have halted Biden's effort to help erase some of the debt incurred by black students, who in my opinion should have been given a free education in the first place. Due to their ancestors suffering through hundreds of years of the worst slavery system known to man or woman, was slavery really that bad? 
Wait until you see that Will Smith movie Emancipation, that was snubbed at the Golden Globes to refresh your memory how bad and horrible it truly was, I am an avid reader of history and that movie shocked even me. The Black Lives Matter group's plan is outlined on the Root.com website. If you need help with your tuition debt they have a small amount of money left, and you can sign up for some of it on that website but you better hurry and do it very soon. That website again is the Root.com. If you are turning 65 in 2023, it would be very wise of you to read the advice for you on the MotleyFool.com website right now. Just search for retirement. And while you're on the Motley Fool website look for another article titled, Two Ways to Generate Income in Retirement Without Going Back to Work, on the MoneyCraft.com website, a very good website to peruse now and again for excellent retirement advice. There is a huge headline that says, How do you get $18,984 more in Social Security benefits? I would encourage people in their 50s or even younger, to read today. So you can thank me later as you're spending your second honeymoon in Paris, sipping champagne, every now and then, and eating Severuga caviar, my personal favorite, I am sure Disney World did their best to keep this bit of unfortunate news that went viral on the net after a silly mistake at one of their parks recently, but they couldn't hide it from the eagle eyes and ears of me, Professor Orpheus. If you go to the inthenow.com website before Disney pays them to take it down you'll see a big headline that says, Disney guest is horrified to discover what is served alongside Wagyu beef dinner, dear god. A woman dining at Morimoto's in Disney Springs in Lake Buena Vista, Florida, was brought to tears by what comes with every order of Wagyu beef. I personally don't trust TikTok, but one of their videos that got over a million views was about a woman visiting a Disney facility in Lake Buena Vista, Florida who innocently bought an expensive $32 per ounce beef dinner with a 3 ounce minimum to boot, that's a little under $100 mind you. And just so you know, Japanese A5 Wagyu beef is typically served in Japan with a certificate of authenticity, detailing each cow's unique lineage, place of birth and other details. Each cow has a unique identification number, which can be looked up on a Japanese government website. That's how serious the Japanese take this entree. Remember I said that's how the Japanese take this beef. The certificate that came with this diner's expensive food even included a nose print of the animal she was about to eat. If it was me and I think I have a strong constitution, I would have thrown up, even before eating one bit. Seems Disney doesn't realize Americans don't care about animals they consume at the dinner table. There's no word in the website article if the diner got her money back or if she had a mental breakdown Disney might have made sure of that. Did you know in today's job market there are, or, were, some very strange job opportunities? One such job that was only recently eliminated due to budget constraints, was a job at Netflix, that paid someone a salary to count the skip intro icons on Netflix videos, one person who held this position, who was paid a daily 8 hour salary, said she could do the job in 2-3 to three hours from home. Another somewhat strange job however still exists, that sounds like fun, is a prop shopper for a television show. This person would show up for work every day and the designer would tell them what prop they needed for the show and they would have to go out and either buy or rent the item, in Japan, if you are an American, and I am assuming a white American but I am not absolutely certain, you can make $145 a day by going to Japanese weddings as a designated foreigner in photos. The Japanese like having some certain diversity in their wedding photos. There was or still is a company that rented out stand in bridesmaids. But I think that business went under during the pandemic. The post office hires people to read addresses the machines can't and enter them into the system. The CAPTCHA company, you know those annoying things that you have to complete to prove you're a human being online and not a machine, will pay you to take the tests all day. There is a guy who started a business that drives people who are afraid of bridges to drive them across bridges in their own cars. Apparently he made a nice sum of money each month. Madison Chekets, is a very smart 12 year old. She got sick and tired of seeing plastic water bottles filling up the beaches near her home in California, so what did this bright young lady decide to do? She invented a water bottle you can eat. How she did it is too complicated to detail in this video, but if you want more information on her water bottle you can eat, that cost her $1.20, to make it home and should cost pennies if mass produced in a factory, go to the smithsonianmag.com website. This young lady is a pure genius and should go far. I am personally proud of her and wish she was my daughter, are you ready for some news that I find absolutely incredible and little Stevie Wonder better be listening to this video podcast. My favorite website, thebrightersideofthenews.com on December 13th, had a headline that said groundbreaking implants can restore 2020 vision to the blind and visually impaired that is made from collagen protein from pig's skin. The implant restored vision to 20 people with diseased corneas most of whom were blind prior to receiving the implant. 
Can you imagine being blind one day and then having perfect vision the next? That is incredible and a gift from the true creator of the universe. Now for some trivia that I will put in my podcasts from time to time. I found some very interesting and intriguing information about the lowly mockingbird that surprised me. For example the mockingbird gets its name from its mimicking abilities. While cats meow and dogs bark, mockingbirds mimic. Throughout their lifespan, these crafty creatures have a knack for imitating sounds they hear. From frogs croaking to other bird calls, the mockingbird will learn and recreate these sounds and often string them together in strange melodies. Male mockingbirds have been known to learn over a hundred sounds, and also have the ability to keep picking up new ones throughout their life. It's the national bird of several North American states. A famous bird of note, the mockingbird is the chosen state bird for five different states in North America. These are namely, Arkansas, Texas, Florida, Mississippi, and Tennessee. Mockingbirds have the third most state bird appointments in the USA, after the western meadowlark and northern cardinal. They're vulnerable to various prey, even other birds. From freshly laid eggs to adulthood, mockingbirds have a list of predators that could lead to an early death. This includes hawks, owls, various snakes, and even squirrels. The northern mockingbird was nearly extinct. In the 1800s and 1900s, northern mockingbirds were popular pets and were often caged to keep them from escaping. The capturing of these birds for this booming pet trade nearly led to their demise. The most notable mockingbird pet in history was owned by Thomas Jefferson during his presidency, named Dick. It has many cultural references. From Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird to its inspiration for the interspecies bird in the famous Mockingjay in the Hunger Games trilogy, mockingbirds are continuously mentioned. Whether a symbol of innocence or defiance, this feathered creature has made waves in various creative outlets with its unique mannerisms. Beyond literary symbolism, mockingbirds also feature in many songs throughout the ages. Whether it's a rap icon such as Eminem or a 70s classic by James Taylor, these songbirds are a common reference or song title in the music world. While the lullaby Hush Little Baby, Don't Say a Word has been a classic for consoling children, its lyrics mentioning mockingbirds are pretty dark. As mentioned, mockingbirds were near extinction due to their popularity as caged bird, which gives the, buy you a mockingbird lyric a problematic layer. The Galapagos Islands mockingbirds are very different and nearly extinct. Four types of mockingbirds are found on the Galapagos Islands, but these species have contrasting qualities and significantly smaller numbers than their northern counterparts. For more information go to the interestingfacts.com website. Now, this was a scary headline I found in the worldatlas.com website regarding climate change, that they will never put on the evening news until it is too late. It read, these eight American cities could vanish by 2100. That means you should tell your newborn baby to never live in these eight cities, why? The United States is experiencing one of the fastest sea level rises in the entire world, with many renowned cities along the coasts also in the way of severe storms, worse storms than the ones we are currently experiencing. These eight cities are subject to flooding from climate change effects are most likely to disappear by 2100. So which cities will be underwater by then? Atlantic City, New Jersey is for sure a goner, right behind it are Charleston. South Carolina and Houston, Texas and Miami Beach, along with New Orleans, Louisiana and Boston, Massachusetts and New York City and finally Virginia Beach, Virginia. All will be underwater by the year 2100 according to this article in the worldatlas.com website. Check it out when you get a chance, again, that's the worldatlas.com website. If I was the host of a national news program here in America right now, this is where I would announce a major breaking news story. I would say, we interrupt our normal programming to announce a major breaking news story from the online magazine, Consumer Reports, and the New York Post online newspaper and the Daily Mail online newspaper, in England, all of which, have a large headline that says, Toxic heavy metals found in many dark chocolate bars including Hershey's, Ghirardelli, Lint by researchers and by researchers they mean Consumer Reports. Tests by Consumer Reports on 28 chocolate bars made by popular brands, including Hershey's, Lint and Tony's Chocol only a popular chocolate brand from England, revealed all were positive for lead and cadmium. Did I just say lead and cadmium? We all know lead is very dangerous for young children to ingest and so is cadmium and we also know kids love chocolate candy bars so every parent and everybody else should be aware of the danger of eating dark chocolate from major brands. How this happened is still being investigated. So stay tuned to this podcast for future updates on this harrowing dangerous problem for all of us. Again, that is a broadcast you will never see on the evening news and you know why. The global chocolate industry makes 127.9 billion American dollars every year. 
that's too much money to lose because of an unknown error that mainly affects children who routinely get sick often. So the networks who worship an industry that advertises and spends up to $17 billion advertising on television and elsewhere, every year don't want to piss off that industry in the fear their own revenue will go down significantly. So they want us and our kids to continue eating dark chocolate, even if it kills some of us and our children. Now back to our regular programming. This has been Richard Summers as Professor Orpheus from the Not on the Evening News Video Podcast Network reporting with a serious health warning. Please pass this warning on to your friends and family. On the PBS NewsHour online, comes a surprising headline that says, Netherlands expected to apologize for its role in slavery in the Caribbean. I am very pleased and happy to see this. I believe good things will happen to the Netherlands people because of this announcement once they fulfill the promise. I just hope the United States, a major importer of kidnapped people forced into lifetime bondage can see its way to doing the same thing in this so-called Christian nation. This announcement from the Netherlands comes after it was revealed they invented an evil heartless version of the Holy Bible not just for their slaves in the Caribbean but for all slaves worldwide. That evil book told all slaves who could read it to obey their masters no matter how cruel they were and never ever run away, if they wanted to go to heaven if and when the good master kills them or works them to death. How much you want to bet me you'll never live long enough to see the United States apologize for its role in slavery in the next century, I'll bet a hundred dollars, America won't do it because it is as desperately trying currently to paint the narrative, that slavery isn't something it needs to be contrite or remorseful for since it helped black people. Hi this is Joanna. Well, that is all for this episode of the Not on the Evening News video podcast. Please tell your friends and family about us, because every episode will have one or two stories, you had no idea about, that you don't want to miss. Professor Orpheus is a voracious reader of over 200 online newspapers and online magazines every morning even before he gets out of bed, so naturally he comes across lots of stories you'll never see on the evening news that affects us all. Subscribe and hit the notification icon to make sure you stay up to date with every episode. Thanks for tuning into and or listening to this episode. We hope to see you next time. Goodbye for now and stay safe.